Welcome to this video where I'm going to have a look at a planet that actually orbits four stars. And the planet's called Kepler 64b, and it's quite an interesting system actually. So we already know that lots of planets orbit more than one star. So we've got planets that orbit binary stars, so two stars, and they orbit around the outside, maybe they orbit one of the stars. There's actually quite a lot of planets that orbit more than one star or, or binary system, so two stars. And there are also planets that even orbit three stars. So maybe we've got a binary system, there's a third star that goes around the outside of that, and then the planet orbits that. So there's a, again, there's a reasonable amount of star or planets that orbit three stars. But there's also planets that orbit four. So Kepler 64b is one of those planets, and it orbits four stars. And it's actually a collection of two binary systems that orbit a common centre of mass and the planet orbits around the outside of one of those. So you've got two binary systems. A is an eclipsing binary with a period of about 20 days, whereas B is not. So what do we mean by an eclipsing binary? So you've got two stars and it means that as we look at them, they actually pass in front of each other, so they actually eclipse each other. And if you were to look at the brightness of that, because what we can't do is we can't resolve individual stars. We can only really see the, the light coming from both of them. We can't individually see each one. So we can measure the brightness. And as they pass in front of each other, they block each other's light out. So actually you get this sort of shape, this light curve, which is the brightness of the object against time. And you can see it dips in brightness as they pass in front of each other. Now, the maximum brightness is when they're configured like this, so they're not in front of each other. When they're fully separated, you've got the light from both stars, which means it's at its, at its brightest. Now, as one of those passes in front of each other, so when the smallest star eclipses the biggest star, you get the biggest dip in brightness. So if we're looking at it, that small star passes in front of the big star, we get a big dip in the brightness of that star. And in the other way around, when the big star then eclipses the smaller star, you then get the smaller dip. So you get a big dip, a little dip. If the two stars were exactly the same size and same temperature, you'd get the same dip in brightness. But that's not often the case. They're generally slightly different in size or maybe considerably different. So that's an eclipsing binary, which is what the planet actually orbits. Now, B is a non-eclipsing binary star system. So again, you've got two stars there. They are orbiting a common centre of mass in this binary system. So you've got A and B. Only one of those is an eclipsing binary system. Now, Kepler-64b orbits the binary A. This is our eclipsing binary. And it has a period of just over 138 days. So it takes 138 days to go around the outside of that binary star system. And the binary A and the binary B, they are orbiting a common centre of mass. So they themselves, what's they're orbiting in their own little system, the two systems themselves are orbiting the common centre of mass of that. So you can start to see just how complex the orbit of this planet is likely to be. Now, the planet itself, Kepler-64b, is about the size of Neptune. So it's a fairly large planet, it's not Earth-like, so it's going to be kind of like a gas giant. It's, again, a reasonably a reasonable size, so you're not really going to expect to find life on that because of its size, really. And how was it detected? Well, it was detected with the transit method. So this is where a planet will pass in front of a star, it blocks out some of the light, and then we can detect it. And it's a fairly straightforward method. This is just an example, this is not the light curve from this particular planet. But you can see, as that planet passes in front, it blocks out some light, and the amount of light it blocks out relates to its size, and other things like that. Now the actual light curve from Kepler, where it was detected, is here. And the green dips are noted as the planet transit. So those green lines there, or the dips, are not that great, but that is when, this is when the planet actually passes in front of the stars. And the other one, so you can see there are, there are much, much larger dips in brightness which relate to the eclipsing binary star system. This is where the stars are eclipsing each other, and they block out more light because obviously the stars are bigger and they're brighter. 
so those dips are, are bigger but the planet dips are there and you can see you've got three there actually and this is from the original light curve of when it was detected now if you kind of zoom in on those a little bit more you can see that the actual transits themselves are, are slightly different so and that's because it's, a, it's an eclipsing binary system so each each transit is not exactly the same it's not like transiting a, a single um, star slightly different you've got two stars there so each one is uh, not quite the same slight variations there so you're probably wondering is it actually habitable despite its size being neptune like is it in the habitable zone because we could have moons around it maybe and the moons might be habitable they could be earth size but unfortunately the habitable zone around this binary star system in this system is further out than where the planet actually sits so the you've got the inner edge of the habitable zone there and the outer edge and then the actual orbit of the planet is quite away inside of that and that means that this planet is quite hot so it's just under 500 kelvin or 208 degrees celsius or 406 degrees fahrenheit so it's a very hot one so not necessarily very hot but it's a hot planet that wouldn't necessarily be habitable unfortunately so thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos